Yeah. Okay, good. So if it's okay, I can start? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, so um, I was working on adding or readjusting a test in the Valero plugin um, to use, to have a test that does, um, that uses populators um, straight away without having a data volume. Um, so in order to do that, we create um, the volume import source and then put it in the PVC as the data source rep. And it just, um, it, remem like it, it got me thinking, or I remember that when we talked, when we implemented about populators, we talked about maybe having this kind of sources, um, like, like similar to golden images that we have like a, already existing kind of sources that people can use to populate their PVC. Um, so I remember that we talked that maybe we can do some of, of that with like existing volume import sources that people can use instead of making users create them themselves. Uh, so I just wanted to raise that um, idea or resurface it, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's the first question, and and then like a follow up. Um, I'm I'm not sure, but I think we should. Uh, but um, in case we have a PVC that we are, um, that we are backing up, are we supposed to um, back up the this source also, or not? Okay, so maybe I can take at least I'd be happy to weigh in uh, as one voice on the on the things. So for the volume import sources, um, I just wonder like what namespace would they go into because you cannot use them cross namespace. Um, so you'd have to like we could that we like. For OpenShift virtualization, it had well. I guess we use the we have the golden images namespace in any case, and um, there are volume import sources there, right? Uh, well, not yet, um, but like we can, they can be there, but uh, you'd still have to like look in that namespace and then copy it to your where you want to use it. Yeah, there's no cross namespace data source on PVCs is still alpha, so I don't think we should right, yeah, yeah. concern yeah, ourselves with this. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I, I wasn't even aware there was a <clears throat> there was an alpha proposal for it, but that's cool. Um, and as far as I don't, I don't think we should even uh, our plugin should deal with that stuff at all either. Like I think Valero knows about PVCs. Um, well, I, I guess a couple of things. I mean, the, the source is not uh, like, as far as should we back up the volume import source? I think, um, you know, it's obviously not needed once the PVC is bound. Um, mm -hmm. But I think more uh, directly, I think like Valero knows about PVCs. It should know about data sources if it's important to back these things up. So I don't think that we should really be involved in in that, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's stuff. like if, if it's missing yeah. from Valero core, maybe we can add it, but I don't think we should do anything special for PVCs. Right, because it's general and not specific to uh, VMs. Like yeah, I tend to agree with that. And you can always include them in your backup uh, explicitly if you care enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Because I was about to to make I was in the middle when we started this meeting, but I thought about what will happen if I deleted the namespace and and, um, and then uh, you won't have that import source. I just wanted to make sure that um, um, it still works. Well, when Valero does the restore anyway, it's it it's not it's going to use this. You know, it created a snapshot when it backed up, so. 
the restored PVC is going to have, you know, be from a snapshot anyway. Yeah, so. yeah, I, I thought so too. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Um, yeah. Um, now, this, the second one, I think we, again, I, we talked about, and I also, I think I talked with Adam about it, and Michael, I saw you opened uh, a PR to fix the issue that was reported. So I just wanted to make sure with everyone that uh, uh, we we do want to to do this because when I talked with Adam, I remembered um, that he was against it, against fixing the issue of the MAC addresses. Yeah, I'm still a little bit like I definitely think that sometimes this will be what people would like to do. Um, but I could see that it could also, um, bother other people, you know, like if you're just trying to restore your backup to a different namespace, because, uh, I don't know, let's say you're going from, uh, you, you, uh, maybe your workflow uses, I don't know if this makes sense, but if your workflow uses backup and restore to promote, uh, something from uh, a dev staging environment to a production environment maybe the namespace changes but you want it to be production and now you cleared the there's a side effect that because you did that your mac address is cleared um so i don't know for sure like i guess one of the things that i wonder is could we check the do we know when we're restoring a backup do we know the original namespace yeah i mean that's what this pr mm -hmm. does it mm -hmm. detects when you're restoring to a different namespace from the source okay could we look and see if the vm exists in that namespace that's and nice. only and only if it does clear the mac address i think then we're just getting honestly i put a hold on this because i'm sure i i think like you i'm unsure about this whole thing in the first place mm -hmm. yeah. uh i i don't know i don't think we want to get too uh, smart about it. And uh, the other uh, option that, that we have to consider about, think about too, is what if they're uh, restoring to a different cluster? And I don't know that there's even a way that in the Valero args where you can detect that. Yeah. Um, I mean, a different cluster may be on a different layer to networks so or MAC address. It may be fine if you restore the same MAC address, but um, what is, yeah, what is the general um, Valero attitude on this particular use case of essentially using Valero backup restore to clone objects? Is that considered a use case that Valero wants to target? Or, yeah, yeah or sure. Is... There, they have a way. They also have a built-in mechanism called resource modifiers where you can um, give like JSON patches to change, remove whatever fields when you're restoring. Mm. Um, and you do that, do you do that in a re in the restore object? So like, yeah, I think uh, the restore object has a bunch of like patches or something. Okay. So could we just, could we just document an example um, about how to use the, the yeah. Image? So the reason I'm trying to make the, it, uh, actually, this is, I think, it, I think we should probably talk to the like Valero, like our Valero maintainer people about this. I, I don't know. I think some level of user friendly list would be nice, but um, mm -hmm. Personally, um, but because um, I think this is something that that, that is like just going to hit someone by surprise, um, mm -hmm. uh, and see what they think. Like, because the, the reason that I even made this PR is because uh, um, the Veritas people were asking about it, and they're actually like really pushing hard for this and. You know, I, I like you, I, I'm conflicted. I don't know that we even want to do this, which is why I have a hold on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, my suggestion would be, yeah, so maybe we can talk to uh, like Wes Hyuton and he can help us uh, to 
you know, talk because like it would be interesting if in if Valero provided an API that said like your your restore mode, if there was like a you know a strict restore versus a um like a clone restore. I don't know what you would name it. That's not the point of the thing, but. If you could pick the mode that you're restoring in, then we could respond to that and then like flip some things. Cause if it's a clone restore, there's gonna be won't there be other things we need to clear as well? I know this isn't the main culprit, but um there could be some other things too. Um, yeah, I don't know of any um cluster scopes. I think this is this yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. There there could be, but I think if I think restoring I I don't know. It may maybe Wes says I, I would think it's restoring to a different namespace is like the quote unquote clone flow, you know? Yeah. Um, that's fair. But but it is like it's clunky to figure it out. It's, yeah. It it's it's a I don't know. Uh, and what if I don't want it? There'd be no way to opt out yeah. of it. Yeah, I mean you would have to uh create a, you know, uh add it later but it, it writing these json patches is just going to be really annoying because this is like you know vm like spec template spec interfaces the zero you know it, it <laughs> like yeah no no, no sure. one wants to write like json patches Mm -hmm. Which is why if we provide one canonical example for a VM with a single network interface, if you want to clear the MAC address on yeah, restore maybe. at yeah. like, this is what your restore CR looks like. Um, yeah, I think the problem though is say you're restoring all like the VMs in a the namespace, then, then, there, then maybe there's a JSON patch that can do all the um, types. I don't know, but it's... Um, yep. No, it's fair. <laughs> or just MAC address is the only there it only appear maybe there's some kind of wild card and you know, I don't know. But it, I, I for me I think that um documenting it is better than doing nothing at all. Um and I'm not convinced we necessarily want to do this without talking to Valero first. Yeah, I think we should that's why it's on hold. I was hoping we could talk to the Valero folks and see what like I, I would like to hear feedback from actual Valero users like the only time I actually use Valero is when I have to fix a bug or do something like I I, I don't really mm -hmm. know if, if what what makes sense to them maybe mm -hmm. re the resource uh modifies are a thing they do all the time and it's no big deal I don't know or this would be like a huge thing to save the day I, I just think it would be a good idea to get some feedback mm-hmm Yeah, that's a good point. All right. What do you um, think, Shelley? Yeah, I, I, uh, I to brought this up. Curious. Yeah, I brought this up because um, I saw that you put the hold on, so I thought maybe um, instead of uh, thinking of it myself, we can raise it to the group again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, does anyone else have have thoughts on this? Uh, I'd hate to for a couple people to dominate the the thinking. I, I will just say that, like, uh, I, I don't know, like the Veritas people, it, like I think Shelley and Adam, I think you're you're in the slacks with them. They're like messaging every day about it. I told them we're validating the approach, <laughs> no ETA. Um, but yeah, they they seem to be very keen on it. But I also think they're like even a lower level of like less experience than us with Valero or, you know, they yeah. just the easy button. Okay. Um. Right. So I think the next sounds like the next steps would be um, to seek out some uh, additional Valero advices uh, advice on this. Um, I would suggest uh, Wes. Uh, I can point you to him at least. I know that 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 would be one option. 
I think like semantically, it's not a, a restore if you don't copy over the Mac. So like it should be like a conscious decision decision on the user's behalf, the one that's restoring to clear it out. Mm -hmm. Are you per so the, you the problem? I get. I totally get that. The only issue is like that. That is going to get uh, inserted. It, like the user may not even know it's there. You know, like that's something that gets added that can get added later. So you mm -hmm. can get you can create the VM with the conflicting MAC address. You just can't start it twice, right? No, I think I, I, I don't know the exact what happens exactly, but you know, I think I, in OpenShift there's a gatekeeper like in a webhook. Uh, like a duplicate Mac gatekeeper on the one of the network components. So I don't think mm -hmm. it'll uh, it'll start a VM. Like, I don't think you could create a VM object. I okay, think the VM object is being created because the restore is not failing, um, but just people couldn't start it. And then they got, I can check the, the issue again, what they wrote in it. But if I remember mm -hmm. correctly, the, the issue was not that they couldn't create the VM, it just that uh, they couldn't start it. So. Yeah, my understanding uh, yeah. is more uh, along the lines of Shelly. So like, for I feel like I tried this, um, perhaps, and noted that, that it like, you could start one or the other, but not both. And like, in such a situation, it's much easier to clear the MAC address if you know that's the problem after the fact, than it is to like, try to figure out what it was supposed to be before and then, uh, you know, and then add it back. And if there's any, you know, implementers of uh, backup and restore or anything that want different behavior, um, they could potentially uh, do that themselves. There's also these Kubernetes components that inject stuff into your uh, into your pods, like they inject CAs and stuff like that. So if you back up and restore that, you'll hit the same problem. So maybe Valero, the Valero people already heard about this problem before. So we should just align to whatever they align to. I think. Hmm. Like this is not not a new problem to us for sure. Like. There are several use cases where you can't just copy over a, a definition and be fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this is like, yeah, where pods and VMs are different though. Like with VMs, you ex you may expect expect the persistent um, binding. Yeah, you can't just clear stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's more occurrences of this in the VM uh, realm, I agree. It'd be interesting if we could um, if we could find a non uh, a non cubevert um, like specific example uh, and ask Valero how they intend to handle such a case because a lot of times when we come with just a a VM specific one, they're like, well, we we haven't thought about virtual machines. But you know, it's easier to dismiss us because uh, we're VMs. But so I have an answer about someone that reported it. He restored to a different namespace. Uh, the restore created the VM, but couldn't start. And once he stopped the original VM and then restarted the new VM, it uh, it was successful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's so what I remember too. Yeah, when creating, when starting the VM, the VMI is, the IP is empty because of the conflict. So honestly, in my view, it's like, yeah, that's annoying. You can't run them both, but like even more use cases are still unaffected. Like if you're just restoring it to a different uh, namespace because you decided you want a different namespace or whatever the case may be, um, like it still works unless you want the old one too. So I don't know.
So anyway, I think we probably have, uh, I'm guessing we have enough uh, context here, Shelly, um, to kind of decide, I mean, we can, that we have a next step at least. Shelly, do we still, do you still meet with the OADP people every once in a while? Um, there is a meeting <laughs> uh, in, in uh, uh, half an hour, actually. Okay. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, it, it yeah, makes it, sense to bring it up there. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know anything about these meetings, but if if they're kind of uh, uh, open floor type things, maybe. Yeah, it's already be office hours, so it's it's free stage more or less. Um, okay, we can we can try that. I can share with you the the meeting if you want to. All right. So uh, let's go on to the next item. I guess we can do the CDI issue triage. Um, I'll pop that open. Okay, so this one is about uh, occasional failures, clone a DV from a PVC of another namespace. Okay, clone 20 DVs at the same time. Two of them are failed. Yeah, we've been going back and forth on this. Um, I wasn't able to reproduce it. And um, yeah, I don't know what's going on. I think he just, the guy just, or the person just added more info this morning. But um, basically the only way, what's happening, what appears to be happening is that the claim is, so the target PVC is becoming lost. And the only way that can happen is if it somehow gets lot, like lost after. Um, so like the populator did its work. And so what appears to be happening is the populator did its work and populated the target. And then the claim is getting lost somehow. And then the data volume controller marks, when a claim gets lost, the data volume controller marks the DV has failed. Mm. And I have no idea how, how it became lost. Like, I ran it locally. Um, I, I feel like this is something we would, like, certainly our performance team would have caught. Yeah. I wonder if uh, in the reconcile loop, when we're actually like reattaching like finished uh, PVC primes, like the when we're rebinding the volume, if like there's a weird case where um, we bail out of the reconcile loop without doing all the work because like one of the items in the loop is, I don't know, I'm just speaking abstractly here. Uh, I don't know the code well enough, but. I wonder if uh, it could be something like that, where the reconcile bails out without doing all of the work for one PVC. I don't know. I mean, so a, a claim can only be lost if it was bound once. So mm -hmm. presumably we bound it. Uh, I don't know how it could possibly get unbound. Like, I just don't see how, like... Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're not able to reproduce this? Yeah, I ran the exact script that the guy had. Okay. Uh, in, hmm. in his last comment, he reproduced it on Cooper CI. Um, and he gave you all the information on how he did it. So. Oh, good. Uh, did he? That's what he says in here. You scroll up to the top. And... So you use uh, Qvert provider 127.6. What's Qvert storage equals Rook Ceph CS? I don't know what that is. 
yeah, yeah that, that definitely should, that should be like Rooksev default or maybe he just copy and paste the CSI uh, reference oh, okay huh. um, yeah that would be yeah, I don't know what we would do with that Kubernetes storage parameter that's interesting nothing nothing like it doesn't do anything like yeah, it doesn't deploy rook stuff. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and he's got a, a storage class is called Seth Block, which is you know, I don't. That's not our store. Anything we create. So we should ask him if he's doing <clears throat> uh, his own custom uh, storage provider because maybe that's where he's coming from. Maybe he's testing some kind of storage of his own. And it's mm -hmm. not deployed properly, or something weird's happening. Yeah, he included the storage class YAML. If you want to scroll down, I think. Okay, so this is Helm. It's okay. Helm deployed. Yeah. Yeah. This is some other. And his reclaim policy is retained. Yeah. Not that that should matter, but. Okay. Is that, pro hey Alexander, is that provision or string the same as like what we, what ours is with works up default? I think so. Let me just double check real quick. But yeah, who knows what version is yeah. being deployed? Release name. So it could be a super old. It's not the default storage class. I don't know if that, well, I guess that doesn't matter for this. Yeah, that is the correct version. Exxt four. Uh, none of this stuff should matter, but I'm looking at the parameters. Yeah. Well, at least that explains why it's doing um CSI clones or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, we have to. Uh, yeah, I think I think this is uh something is up with their Seth install. Mm -hmm. Or maybe that claim policy is not something we test very uh thoroughly. Right? We, we test... Yeah, it's an interesting idea. Uh we, I, I'll definitely try running it with uh 127, whatever, like three nodes and and that um, retain, but um, yeah, it's weird that some would work and some wouldn't, I think, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. Are they? But it's possible, it could be like a weird race condition if you rebind, uh, but that shouldn't, you know. Yeah, maybe it could be a Kubernetes issue with uh, how they reconcile the like the bound states of PCs yeah. if too many of them bind at the same time. Yeah. Could be yeah. a number of things. All right. So what is the next step on this one? Do I need to write anything here or will you guys? I, I don't think take... so. I'll just take a look, another look later. And, uh... But okay. yeah, I think I think we're going to have to dig into what like his storage provisioner. Mm -hmm. All right. Sounds good. So I will go to the issues list this was number 3259 and so there's one other one cdi importer pod shows nbd kit error not able to create data volume OK, 
could not open. Ooh. Yeah, no, I, I think there's something wrong with their storage there. Uh, I think MBD kit is crashing. If you look at oh. the logs that they provide. Right here, give me image error. Or actually, their source data, their, um, I think they were trying to read it from a, a mini LS3 or something. It was sort of a weird, uh, weird source. And I think the, the byte range uh, failed on it. Okay. And byte ranges, and that's why MBD kit uh, failed. Hmm. So I, I, if you scroll down, I, I have some comments on there. But, uh, yeah, see, they have a mini L HTTP server. I, I didn't know mini L did that, but apparently it does. So, um, so I, I told them to you know, put in a GZIP version, just uh, bypass MBD kit, and because then mm -hmm. they would use the byte range. And apparently they can import now, but it takes too long. I'm not quite sure what what they're doing. Um, they're, uh, they're doing something weird. So I, I don't think it's, it's a real issue. We just need to sort of help them get straightened out on what they're doing. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yep. Thanks for the uh, proactive responses there so i think we're good we're waiting on them to respond to your question so i think that gets us caught up on issues um we are back to the agenda and uh nothing further so i'll just uh go to open floor and see if anybody has any other topics that they'd like to bring up All right, hearing none, I think we can uh, end the call at this point. So uh, thank you everyone for joining and we will see you at the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.